Hi everyone, today I am going to be tackling this page from 30 Days of Creativity. So this is a drawing page and I have um, done Johanna's um, How to Draw Inky Wonderlands book where it had stuff about drawing flowers and I developed some of my own techniques for that and I thought I would share them with you. First tip, when Johanna draws a flower she draws a small circle, hang on, let me get my sketchbook. She draws a small circle like this, can you see? And then she draws a bigger circle around the outside. Let me zoom in a little bit and you can see how very wobbly my circle is and how the centre isn't right in the centre. Now first tip I found was it was easier to draw the big circle first than the little one in the middle and I found it was easier to get it central but as you can see I'm still mega wobbly so I'm going to use my circle tool to provide some um, straight straight less wobbly circle so here is a much better looking circle now to find the center you can use the little one in the middle but where's my center get my ruler draw across the middle it's going to be a little bit rough because I'm not complete I'm not measuring it but you could do but I don't need it to be absolutely exactly precise then I choose my circle like that this isn't central I try, I try and get my circle in the middle and then draw draw a, a center circle you can see I'm struggling with this a little bit but I think it is easier than um, not using um, a tool and this is would all be rubbed out um, on Johanna's main page next is petals now what Johanna would do was once she's got her circle let's say let's not do a center let's just find the center of our circle um, by measuring it across we've got one and a half centimeters there so that's about there that's the circle with centers about there <sighs> okay so we've got different shaped petals that we could potentially draw we need them to end here and start there so this is a standard shape petal Okay, but some people find them hard to draw. I can do it at that angle, but when it comes to drawing one here, I can't do it. I can do that side, and then I find that one gets more difficult. So big tip, keep turning around your book, so that if you find a certain angle easier, then make sure your book's always on that angle. So practice in your sketchbook and work out what works well for you. Now, there are other shaped petals, of course, we can do. Johanna also does ones which are rounded, like that. So with a rounded end. So practice those and see if you can draw those, or maybe they don't um, work for you. Another one she does is she comes diagonally out and does a sort of heart shape, like that. That is one I really struggle with. That might look okay, but if I do it all the way around, doesn't really quite work for me so what I will do um, or oh, another one is to leave the um, let's go around here so we've got a central circle is to go to a point like that and like that so we leave we don't come to a point at the middle and you can see how uneven my two sides are now one thing we have to remember is nature isn't even it things aren't going to be exactly perfect so it might be worth just remembering that when you're drawing and if you look really hard and carefully at Johanna's look at this one some of the this petal here is much smaller these are smaller than these now for me in my eye I'm like well that one's behind so it's a bit thinner you know and that's why and that's fine but when I look at my own like that I don't see it in the same point of view I think oh I've done it wrong so try and remember that Johanna's aren't perfect nature isn't perfect none of us are so try and get it as good as you can for your own head but remember you know it doesn't have to be absolutely dead spot on now leaves, we have a similar thing. We don't have a circle um, sort of thing to draw around. So what Johanna did in her um, 
how to draw Inky Wonderland's tutorial where she taught us about leaves. So let's say this is the center of the flower here, okay? What she would do, she's gonna put leaves, this flower's finished, let's imagine, it's gonna put leaves coming out. What she would do is draw an imaginary line from the center like that to start her leaf. And what she said is that then it would seem to be in a natural position because there would be a stalk coming from there and then she would draw in the leaf and maybe leave that line as the center and sort of do this or, or <coughs> excuse me or just um do it like that only ink over that bit and rub out that bit it depends whether you want to sort of decorate the center of your leaf or not now some really easy flowers that i find to draw as well are these ones here okay so basically you've just got a line with some lines coming out of it now my lines aren't oh didn't show you i did it off camera sorry so you've got a line with lines coming off it now these are wobbly and not straight now what i find the best thing to do with this sort of thing is use your ruler and use the edge of my thing so you draw your line like that you can draw them like opposite each other like that Oops. try and get them same-ish length maybe like this and then one out the middle you can even measure them and get them the same length if you want to but when you ink them if you ink them freehand they'll be very slightly wobbly and they'll look slightly more natural also your main stalk you might want to make it bendy rather than straight depending on where it is you see what Johanna has made hers bendy here Ramster. and these teeny tiny leaves are quite easy to draw I think smaller things are easier if you're a bit wobbly, it's quite small, you really see it. Okay, I'm looking at what other leaves. See, these leaves with the sort of pointy edges. Now, I find this, the hardest one I find to draw is this one. So, we've got a sort of bell shape like that. And then we do three blips like that. And this one always ends up looking like a weird sort of toe. Because <laughs> it should be pointed and it just doesn't ever quite work. So I tend to avoid drawing those because when I look at it, it just doesn't look right. But uh, these ones, because they're a bit more pointy, I can cope with those better, see? So my tip would be try drawing different things on your rough paper and then see, see what, um, what you think and by the time you get to drawing this. Also, tip for your words, um, let's zoom out a little bit. I would as well, before writing in here, depending on your handwriting and your confidence, use a ruler, measure it, draw some lines even distance apart, thinking about how many lines of words or how many words you've got. Or you could always use a stencil. I've got one somewhere which I use for the cut page, but and that's what I'll probably use for mine. So use a stencil. Now stencils don't look brilliant. I would probably do a little bit in pencil maybe coloured, maybe not, and then go over it yourself freehand to make it a bit bigger and a bit better. Um, but at least you've got a starting block there, which for me makes it easier. My handwriting is not good, so uh, I'd rather use a stencil. Okay, I'm not going to actually draw all of this today. I just thought I would share some hints with you. And should we do some colouring? I think it might be fun, might not it? I've just got... Um, I'm going to have a look in my tray beside me. Um, my husband um, was very kind at the weekend and went out and bought me, oops, um, bought me a cart um, from Hobbycraft for keeping all my um, art things in. And it's been really good. The truth of the matter is that I'm getting so many, I'm just going to transfer my piece of paper to the page. Okay. I'm getting so many um, bits and pieces in my uh, around me that there's no room to breathe <laughs> um i think the family are getting a bit annoyed but they were very polite okay this this page is i need something underneath it do you see it's it's all bouncy i'm just going to grab a copy of um lost ocean and um, stick it underneath here because there's enough paper here it's not going to um spoil my copy of lost ocean but it just means that i've got a bit of cushioning and um, we'll just do this some of these while i keep talking to you um so anyway he bought me this cart for keeping all my pencils on they were all over the mantel shelf and um 
I was thinking, goodness, when we put up our Christmas decorations, which probably be the first week of December, which isn't really that far away, so I'm shadowing what I'm doing. Um, there'd be nowhere to put anything because there's just tins of pencils everywhere. So the little cart is fantastic and uh, everything is in there now. Well, I say everything. I've still got two drawers of pencils on my desk and, um, and three pots of pens, but we'll, I'll pretend that that doesn't. So really I'm just colouring this, I'm using the denim blue, this is my Arteza premium set and uh, I'm just doing it a bit darker in the centre near to the uh, centre of the flower and lighter on the outside. Now another thing about the drawing, I know it's really, you've got the book and it tells you to draw and Johanna asks us to draw and she does boost our confidence a bit when she tells us to do it but if you're really finding it's making you feel a bit down, that you just can't cope with it, then don't do it. You know, it should be about making you happy and being fun. And some people are amazing. They love doodling, they love drawing, and they come up with these absolutely fantastic designs. But other people find it stressful. I used to find it really, really stressful. When I did How to Draw Inky Wonderlands and did the course with Johanna, which is still on her YouTube channel and is well worth a look, if you want to really want to have a go at drawing but you don't feel confident her course explains things in much more detail than what she's doing in this book so i think that she hasn't done the she hasn't repeated herself basically it's all there so she teaches you how to draw the different shapes of flowers and things like that so it is uh, worth having a look at that and i find her little daily emails make me really want to have a go but uh, if you're feeling down and disappointed, then just don't do it. Just uh, do some colouring. There's loads and loads to colour in the book. and uh, Or just start with the colouring. Look at what everyone else is doing drawing-wise. Take inspiration from them. Remember, inspire, not intimidate. There is that saying, I think, in the book. So we've got our flower. You see it's a bit bluer in the centre, darker than the outside. That's exactly what I wanted to achieve. And in the middle... Um, oh, Sorry, I've got a very itchy eye. Um, what should we do in the middle today? I'm thinking yellow. Just a plain yellow middle on the flowers because I think I'm going to do a blue up this this top half. I'm going to do all blue. And I think the yellow and the blue work really nicely together. I am going to do a different shade of blue for this one though. So I'm going to pick this one. This is the oh, indigo blue. Oh, it's really hard to get it so you can see it there we go it's very bad light today i think it's just because it's autumn it's not a sunny day so it's quite dull it's it was a lovely chilly morning actually i achieved so much today it's actually um 10 past one in the afternoon okay so i got up at um 6 15 well i woke up at half five i got onto instagram had a look at all people's inspiring pictures and on Facebook and that sort of thing and then got up um, had a shower and I came down and released my video early because I was ready and and pop details on the various social media sites that I do so that you can all find them and then um, had breakfast and then I started my work I'm doing some freelance writing again at the minute I started doing that and um, I think I got I got three sections to do today and I got the a third of the first section done before the boys left for college and I got the whole of the first section finished um, before half past nine I had to go into town um, but I bought a few Christmas presents because I'm um, trying to do early shopping because we've just telling us that things are delayed and stuff like that and I buy from our as much as I can I try and buy from our local independent shops they don't really have um, I'm going to do the same yellow for the centre of all of them I've decided they don't really have um, Black Friday sales or anything like that because although well, not all the shops in the UK do anyway it's not it's the thing that has come over to us from America because I know it's a sort of post Thanksgiving thing in America um, I'm just finding my next colour um, so anyway, this is the, oh, someone told me how to pronounce this, Mykonos Blue. Um, so the independent 
even if they do have a sale, I feel like they need the money. I want to pay the full price. You know, they need support. We want to keep our high street alive, bustling and open. And at the moment, we do have a really nice high street with a few empty shops, but not lots, and uh, lots of lovely businesses. So, uh, trying to try and support as many as I can with my Christmas shopping. So anyway, I bought a few items. I can't tell you because I don't know who watches this. I don't think many of my family watch this, but you never know. So that was good. Um, but it was nice to have a walk as well. It forced me out for a walk because um, I'd ordered something into one shop. I had to collect it. They would have hold, held on to it for longer, but I just got it in my head. I was going to collect it today. Came home, did my second section of work that I needed to do and uh, had some lunch. Um, started my third section and now I was feeling a little bit of, you know, this is the Mykonos blue by the way again, sorry I didn't tell you. Um, I'm sort of repeating my colours a bit. I'm only going to go between these three, the denim, the indigo. The denim was the one we started with on that one, so I think I'm going to do it on these because it's a little bit further away. Just checking you can actually see what I'm doing. And... Uh, yeah, so I felt like I needed a break. Also, my neighbour went out, and sometimes he plays music and it's a little bit loud, and I worry about it sounding on um, on camera. So so I uh, he went out. I thought it was a good opportunity. This is indigo blue to do this one. I thought it was a good opportunity for me to pop out, um, for me to pop on and uh, record something. And I have to admit, I've been procrastinating doing this page for a while. Um, wondering what to do and then it sort of came to me last night or yesterday when I woke up that I would share um, a few tips with you I was going to do some drawing but I bottled out as you may have noticed I'm going to use this indigo blue for this one as well um, so I will do this page I will do the drawing and I will use the techniques that I have been showing you from my sketchbook but um, I will do it slowly at my own pace when I'm in exactly the right mood for doing it. And uh, I'll colour it in and I will share it with you. Now, I tend to put things on Instagram, but I know it's difficult for some people to view Instagram. If you don't have an account, pull that down. Um, I want to do these ones with little dots of the Mykonos blue. Um, so if you don't have... Um, Instagram, I put everything from Instagram on Pinterest, almost everything, so um, I try to remember, so that, because Pinterest you don't need an account and you don't need to follow me to see what I put, it's nice if you follow me, but I don't know if, I don't really understand the purpose of following people on on um, Pinterest to be honest, I follow like Johanna Vassford and other people and it never shows me any of their stuff unless I actually um, decide to go into their page so I don't really understand how following them has got me anywhere really I'm just looking for some greens I want some bluey greens to go with my blues so I've picked these two um, the darker one is a forest green and the lighter one is emerald green okay and I'm going to do the same as the flowers so I'm not going to I'm going to use one green on each um, one so I'm not going to mix up the greens so for this leaf, for example, I'm going to I'm going to break the tip. I'm going to go darker in here. It's quite difficult because it's near the spine, and I find uh, where the page is sort of bent, it can it doesn't always. Um, I'm just going to brush these pieces away. There we go. It doesn't always make it very easy to uh, to colour that bit. These can break a little bit on the tips, but I don't get too worried. I'm heavy handed sometimes and I do tend to break pencils so I'm going to do the same colour for all of these long thin leaves and what I'm doing is fading the colour towards the end so I'm doing a lot more layers down here and then less as we go up to the tip of the leaf that's it it's quite interesting this morning I'll tell you a little story um, my husband was asking the children I'm going to do the other shade here and here and I'm going to go in with all of these with this shade and use exactly the same technique. He, um, one of the boys, 
I don't know which one, told him he ought to stretch himself and learn some new things. He didn't take that as an offence. He likes learning new things. So they said he should learn some sort of to do with IT. He works in IT. I I was only half listening to the conversation because I was planning my day and getting on with the, with the morning chores and, you know, two days of washing and dishwashing and lunch boxes and breakfast and blah, you know. And... <laughs> um, they were, uh, he, the thing that he wants to learn in IT needs maths. Now, he's not good at maths. He barely passed his O-level. I think he had to retake it three times. Whereas my boys are doing A-level maths and further maths. They're only in their first year, but still, they're confident in maths, as you can imagine. So he got, he had a book, which I think he, he bought for them, but I'm not entirely sure. I'm just looking at where to go now with his screen. I'm going to do these. Just checking you can see i'm not going to try and vary the color because they're so small um now i'm going to go in with my emerald and do everything that's left um so anyway they were um telling him he was looking at this book and saying these are the things i need to know i need to understand what calculus is um now he said to me oh you did calculus i was like no I didn't do A-level, I only did a GCSE, which is up to age um, 16. So in the UK, for those of you who aren't, when you're 16, you take your GCSEs, and those are, I think it's sort of 9 or 10, depending on how capable you are and how much your school want, pushes you. Some people do 11 or 12, but you do quite a range of subjects. You do opt, so obviously um, there isn't space for every subject there, but uh, you, the law says you have to do some science, you have to do um, um, maths and English, two, usually two Englishes, you do a literature and a language, and... Um, I think that's it. And then you can choose between your geography and history or both and your sort of arts and things like that, whatever you want to do. So uh, anyway, so I only did maths at that level. And at A level, you get to choose just two, three or four subjects. You can understand it's a lot um, more specialist and it's actually a lot harder and that's between the age of 16 and 18 and my boys are doing maths and further maths they're both doing a science not the same one one's doing computing one's doing geology so uh, they're doing that and um um i want to do do you see these dots i want to do them in yellow not black so this won't work if you've got a felt pen but i've got this Uniposca, which is a it's a paint pen. So the felt pens you'd still see the black, although you could go over the top of the black if you want it with a felt pen. But I'm gonna dot in all these areas where there's a black and try and cover up those black dots with some yellow. I don't mind if the dots are quite big. I just think it's gonna pick out the yellow from the flower centres. Anyway, so he's um this calculus is A level maths level, so I've never done it. I didn't even know what it was until I asked the children. I thought it was something really exciting, but apparently something to do with graphs. I'm sure people who know lots about maths will know it's not that simple. But I just thought it was something completely new and completely different. And obviously it's a specific type of calculation, but it's just it's to do with graphs. I like graphs, but um, and I love Excel, which I know a lot of people dislike. But uh, there we go. I like that yellow. I think it just lifts it all a little bit. Let me just hold that. And those are blurred. If you bring it into the middle, they might not be. The camera tends to um, focus more on things that are that are closer to the centre. And also, because those are closer to the camera, that's better. They are a bit too close. So there is my um, flower motif coloured in. What I'm going to do is the bottom corner, I won't move the book. Um, I'm going to use the same colour, so I'm going to write myself a little note now, well I need to anyway for the video, as to what colours I use, so I know that when I do the bottom corner I'll do them the same colours. But as I say, I will do my circular motif and I will colour it in and I will photograph it and show you, and I'm telling you this so that I know I've got to do it. But, if you're getting stressed, just colour in this side, you can even just write a quote in the circle and not draw. And I saw something today, I 
got no idea who it was, can't name a name, I'm really sorry if you're listening, and they drew fish, they didn't draw flowers. So if there's something you draw better and that you're confident in drawing, draw that instead. What does it matter? Just have fun with it. Okay, so there we go. There's uh, there's that page. I'm sorry I sort of um, didn't do all the drawing today, but I hope that I've shared enough tips with you to go off, watch Johanna's Inky Art School videos, have a little think about whether it's something you want to do or not, and, uh, and go from there. So thank you so much for watching, and happy colouring.